Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we'll be building these simple yet really cool liquid blobs in Figma. Really smooth and nice animation that is happening here. We'll be able to build this using just Figma prototyping. It's a really simple uh, process. So I'll be explaining everything. And as an extension to this uh, interaction, you can also build something like an image blob. Exactly the same principle, but with an image and just gives a really cool and nice effect. You can use these sort of effects on your homepage landing pages and give a really nice uh, background movement to your entire website. So let's see how can we build this entire thing using just Figma prototyping. So let's get started. So we're in Figma right now and the first thing that we need is an artboard. Now it absolutely doesn't matter what artboard you pick. You can pick any artboard of your choice. I'm going to pick a MacBook Pro 14 inch and we want to give it a dark theme. So I'm just going to give it a black background. Perfect. Now uh, the next thing that we need is to build some blobs. So first of all, I need to know what size of the blobs um, that I want to build. So I'll just hit A on my keyboard and that will open my frame tool and I'll just create a um, square here and something like I think 600 by 600 makes sense. I'll just add a fill so that you can know. So I want my blobs to be contained in this sort of region. So that makes sense. Now I'm just going to pull this out and what we're going to do is we're going to build our blobs in here. Okay. So let's start building our blobs. And we'll basically be using components here and a bunch of other tricks. So make sure that you pay attention, pause it wherever you feel like. So if you see the demo that I built here, it's like this sort of a blob and this blob is actually made up from circles. So to do that, let's just put random circles here. So I just hit O on my keyboard and that will open my circle tool. And what I want to do is, I mean, I want to just create some random circular shapes. You can also use rounded rectangles if you want any shape that you like basically and just round it off so that it just looks a little smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create random circles here and it doesn't matter in which order you want to create. I'm just, just putting something randomly here so that just looks like a blob. If you see, I've just used a bunch of circles to create this sort of a blob. Now what I have to do is I just have to make random movements in this blob and then attach it via prototype. So let's see how can we do that. Let's first create multiple copies of this blob. And the thing that you need to understand here is the more frames that you build, like the more movement that you build and smaller movement that you build, the smoother the overall motion will be. So make sure you build a lot of frames like as per your need to make this movement even more smoother. Okay, so let's quickly just um, move around these blobs here and there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just in the second frame, I'm just going to move these circles here and there and just scale them down. That's also perfectly fine. Just use scaling, use rotation. If you want, you can add some rotations here. That's absolutely fine. You just have to give some random motion to these blobs and just feel like they are moving. So from here to here, it feels like the blob has moved. Now create another frame. And in the similar way, just create like three to four frames and just move them around here and there. You can also add like multiple rotations. If you want, you can just rotate the entire thing like this. That will also make sense. Okay. So just create a bunch of uh, frames where you're just randomly moving them here and there just to make sure that it gives a look of blob moving. Okay, so I've created all the frames now uh, as as you can see, I've created four frames and as I explained, I've just moved these circles here and there so that this gives a notion of this entire blob entity moving. Now I have these four stages ready. What I want to do is I'll just select all four of them and I'll come here and select create component set. So now my component set is ready. I'm just going to call it blob. And the next thing that we need to do is quickly link them through prototyping. So I'll select my first variant and hit my prototyping tab and I'll drag one to two. So instead of one click, you want after delay because you want it to happen automatically. You want it to happen immediately. So one millisecond without any lag. One to two, perfect, smart animate. And now this is the uh, trick here. You have to use linear, don't use anything else because if you use anything else, you'll see uh, fastening and slowing down because all of these are like a variation of ease in and ease outs. So you don't want this, you want like a constant a motion so linear is the thing to pick up here so linear is what we are going to do and we want it to happen really smoothly and slowly so i'm just going to pick 2000 milliseconds for now but you can even increase it if you want even slower motion or even smoother and slower motion 
just keep on uh, playing with this value the time value and you'll get different results so now this is the thing and we have to use exactly the same interaction values for all the other links so after delay one millisecond and smart animate linear 2000 seconds perfect and third to fourth after delay one millisecond linear 2000 second makes sense and from the last to first again so that we have this looping animation so just link the last to the first and same value after delay one millisecond and fourth to first linear and 2000 milliseconds perfect so now our uh, linking is done now one thing that you need to do is um, we don't want any sort of background in these frames we want just the blob so what i'll do is i'll just select all the frames here that i have okay and i'll just come and remove the fill so you just have the blobs perfect now i'll go to my assets panel and i'll pick my blob here and i'll add it in the center let's see how this looks like So here is our blob and it's moving randomly and at this stage itself it looks really good but if you see it's not there yet and we have to do a bunch of things to make sure it looks even more smoother so the first thing that you need to uh, see here is that uh, it still has these hard edges and the motion is still abrupt a little bit when it just moves between one to second frame you see they are really hard edges we don't want like circular edges we want it to be more fluid so we don't the first thing that we need to do is we need to make this motion a little bit more fuzzier and smoother so that we don't see these hard edges and smart hard movements so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come to my first uh, artboard here okay and i'm going to select my component so this component the blob component that i have added okay and i'm going to come here and select the effects panel and i'll select effects and i'm going to add a layer blur to it so let's add a layer blur and if you see when i keep on increasing the layer blur the boundaries will get like diffused the edges will get diffused and you will not recognize the shape it's now looking more diffused and fused together so use something like 60 to 100 any blur value that you want in the layer blur and it'll give you this diffuse sort of a shape so now if i show you see so now it looks more like like a jelly bacteria amoeba kind of thing right it looks more like a blob and a drop because now we don't see these hard edges now as soon as you add a layer blur it however makes everything looks more like jellyish but it also reduces the definition in the edges so it's not as crisp as we expected it to be it has made the entire thing look more like a liquid and a drop but then the edges are also now not defined like the shape itself is very blurry at the edge so to do that we need to build some filters and this is a very simple thing uh, these filters are also used in all the other instagram and snapchat apps so we are going to build and mimic the same sort of filters here in figma so that's the main trick part and i want you to watch it really closely so the first thing that i need to do is i'll select my blob the component that i have and i'll group it into a frame so i'll hit option command g on my keyboard and it'll create a frame now our blob is inside the frame now the next thing that i need to do is need to build these filters so First, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a rectangle inside my frame that we are seeing here. Okay. And I want it to be exactly the same size as the frame. So 600 by 600. Perfect. Now, the first thing that we needed to build is a sharpness filter. So if you see our boundary was not defined, so we need to build a sharpness filter. So I'm just going to call it sharpness first of all. And what we have to do is instead of pass through, we have to give color dodge. So if you give it color dodge and the value needs to be somewhere around like in the grayish area. If you do like white, then you see noise here. And if you do black, then you won't be able to see anything. Okay. So this filter only works when it's in this, this grayish area. So make sure that you pick this gray area, wherever you feel like is the optimum one, like something like this feels good. Okay. So now if you see our boundary with this sharpness filter is defined. So now we have like this boundary visible. The only problem now it also creates a additional glow out of this boundary and this additional glow is something that we don't want so we can again remove this by creating another filter which is basically a low pass filter which removes all of this excessive brightness so we are going to create a low pass filter how to build this low pass filter i'll just duplicate this rectangle again 
I'm just gonna call it low pass filter. And the value that we need to give here is color burn. So we'll give color burn and the color burn only works since we want it to be like the edges in the interaction of this black background and this white. So we wanted to give the color of the background. So don't we don't want to give this uh, gray background. We want to give it a black background. So if you just move it like this black fill, you see it has completely removed the glow. So sharpness introduced a glow. Whereas this low pass filter is now removing the glow, which is at the intersection of this background and this blob. So now if you see with these two filters, low pass filter and sh uh, the sharpness filter, and we have started with these circles intersection. Now we see this blob, which is much more smoother. Now let's see how this looks like actually. So if you see now, this is like more defined, more like jelly shape. Now we don't see this une unevenness of all of these like solid edges. Now it's like a really smooth edge. And it's also moving randomly because of these two filters that we have applied. And that's the main trick of this entire video. You have to create these three effects where one is this layer blur. And on top of it, you need to add these two filters, sharpness, which is a color dodge. And then there's a low pass filter, which is a color burn. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to add some color to this blob. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this um, rectangle again. I'm just going to call it color change its value to normal for now instead of black we want to give it some like a linear fill now if you see this color has completely covered the entire blob so you want only the blob area visible so again what you have to do is select this color one and you have to play with these blending options again so if you play with these blending options you have multiple options here and we'll use the darken one because the background is dark so you have to use this dark one darken so when you do this darken option, what will happen is the area which is like the dark intersection that will go away. Only the brighter area will just uh, the intersection of this brighter area and the color, the blob and this brighter area, only that will be visible. The darker portions will go away. So that's how you use this darken filter. And now let's see how this looks like. If you see now we are getting this really nice blob looking thing. Really, really nice. I mean, we are almost done with our thing. So this is the first part of that video where I explained how to build this really simple nice jelly looking thing now the next thing if you want to add an image the uh, demo that I show where you also had an image um, this image so what you can also do in that case is if you want to add an image what you have to do is select this again the one that you have filled color to it I'm just gonna right click and we are going to fill it with an image so I'm just gonna go to and splash and search portrait image you can pick any portrait image that we want I think I've used this one so let's add this so as soon as you do that you will have now this image added here in this instead of that color you now have image let's call it image and it's gonna do the same exact thing so let's see how this looks like now only where the image interacting intersecting is with the blob you'll only see that part visible now let's say you also want to add text to your design uh, the way we did it on our demos where you see when the the blob interacts with the text you see a blue color that also gives a really nice effect that also can be done really easily so let's say i'll come here and i'll add some text to my entire thing and just move it a little bit here okay so now your text is interacting and the thing that you need to do is instead of pass through and normal you have to give exclusion and if you give exclusion here what will happen is wherever it is interacting with the blob it'll show you a different color so let's see how this looks like so if you see it's also give you a really nice effect wherever it's interacting with the uh, blob so the text will also give this nice effect and the same thing if you add for example i'll remove this and i'll add my linear gradient that we already added yeah so in case of the linear gradient what will happen is when you see you'll see even more darker blue color so that also gives you a really nice again effect with text and the blob so one very important thing that you need to remember is that whatever i've shown you works only for a dark background so if you see we have like a black background in this entire uh, artboard so it'll only work for a black background however if you want this to work for a white background you need to do a few tweaks so let's quickly change it actually if i show you white background you see everything is gone so what you have to do is you have to do a bunch of things. So first of all, select the blob, which had our circles and change the selection color to this gray into black. So once you do black, now you see that our blob is again visible. 
sharpness and low pass filter don't have to do anything they work perfectly fine the image or this color filter that uh, the color variant that we have added on top of the entire thing instead of darken you have to choose screen because it's a white background so you have to choose a screen and now our blob is visible again uh, let's add a black to this text and yeah that's it that's how you create your blob even in white background so this looks really amazing um, i did a lot of research for this video so i hope you like this if you did like it give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel and i'll see you in my next video take care bye bye